All right, welcome, Ernie Ball Music Man Sub Bass. Today you're gonna to find out just how this Sterling Ball Music Man Bass is worth every penny of. So, hello, I'm Donald Witt, the bass instructor of the How to Play Bass online course at IWantToPlayBass.com. Jump over there, subscribe, become a member for free, get your free ebook, and when you're serious about your bass playing, sign up and get well on your way to reaching your bass playing goals. So, coming up is the Sterling Bass. I'm gonna break this down, so wait for it. So introducing my new sub bass, my Sterling by Music Man, and the Stingray 34 inch scale, beautiful paint job on it. Just, I could be tickled about this thing, but is it worth every penny of it? Yes it is, why? Because I didn't buy it. I was surprised, my two boys bought this for me a couple weeks ago, and it um, was a huge surprise. So, and they did pretty good, I must say, because They've got this, this beautiful paint job. They picked this sucker out and they got the matching cable too. So, you know, they did good, I must say. But look at that. Just everything you need. The, she is very nice and she plays as nice as she looks too. But it is the Sterling by Music Man and it's everything that it says it be and like I say is it worth every penny it definitely is this is they definitely music man came out to make a more affordable bass that people can really enjoy and get that classic 70s sound and just that everybody can afford one and can experience a music man because this is there's very minute instances I've played the music man stingrays and you know I see just tiny things that probably aren't recognizable to just the average individual but I've played some high-end basses and this one is definitely is right there it's top-notch the sound is all there there's it's not missing much and I'll break that down for you starting out we've got this beautiful sea foam paint job I mean just look at that thing just look at that just beautiful you know just the pretty I'm not using my new cable just my old one but yeah that's I mean this is the music man this is everything, and if you notice, they if you notice if you have purchased one, you'll see that'll be stamped. Don't don't fear the stamp on the back, made in Indonesia or made in China or made in Korea. They are still inspected in the USA factories before they get put on the shelf. They are, you know, Music Man's not going to jeopardize their name by putting out junk. This is still a high end bass, and it plays like a high end bass. They are, are not going to jeopardize their name for anything they just it saves them they're able to produce this mass produce this base at a lower cost and give it make it more affordable to us here so it's don't fear the the made in indonesia or made in china or made in korea the made in indonesia you'll see the sterling by music man they produce that particular base and the sub base because you'll see the headstock here has sterling by music man and some of them you'll see just say sub in big bold letters. They are, the subs are made out of China as well. China just produces the sub base and it has a harder steel for the fret, which it makes the frets last a little longer. So, I mean, I've never had problems. Just get the crowning tool if you need to and just, you know, shave off a little bit of them if they get worn out. But that takes a lot of playing and they do. But this is the made in Korea and this is the made in Indonesia, which, like I said, they produce the Sterling Bob Music Man and the sub. And in China, they produce the, and this is through the Park family. This I was reading a quote from them that um, that's actually how they did it. They, um, they produce, they've got a lot of factories in Asia, but they've got the different countries are Indonesia, China, and um, Korea. And Korea produces the Sterling Bob Music Man also. So this one has the made in Indonesia stamp. Don't worry with that and like I said I've played this thing and I've played the Music Man Stingrays and this is right there it's comparable there's only a few minor things and actually on this bass I've seen it on other basses but this one I don't notice it a lot of the frets aren't polished much here but these are um, this particular one is this is a nice they did good this bass has really been taken care of and fine-tuned it's a newer Editions, so maybe the older ones were had that issue, but so this is a newer edition, and the older ones had that issue. These the frets up here 
were a little, you know, rough edge. They're a little sharper, but nothing to be concerned about. But they were just a little sharper. But these are nice and beveled. And that's just a little bit about the factor, the manufacturing and everything. Nothing to be concerned about that it's, you know, it's not the, you know, it's not a music man. It's not a fifteen or two thousand dollar bass. It's this is a three hundred dollar bass, and they make the higher end the um, the Ray thirty four, which is like gets you around five hundred dollars. But it only there's a few differences there that I honestly, in my opinion, it's I wouldn't spend that extra money for it. I think what this offers right here is everything you need. But it's still the classic seventies look. You know everything about this. And like I say, I've always wanted a Music Man. And I've always seen them. I've played some, and I've played the Music Man Stingray, and almost got turned off. I was like, and you know, I really don't want that. You know, I've been looking at some other bases, and I think I'll look at those later on down the road. But um, this bad boy just sounds real good. Now that's my amp. Put all the bass, everything's backed off, everything's cut off to nothing. So this is just the bass. Sounds just like the music, man. Still got your standard, your humbucker there, the passive humbucker there that's got the active two band EQ, which some people scoff at the two band EQ. They prefer the three band EQ. It, the three band just offers you some more um, control over the highs and lows, the highs and mids of your bass, where this is just your treble. You got your treble control and your bass and your volume knob, which I am fine with that. I don't need um, all of that control. It's you know it's nice. I can make things happen through my amplifier or through my um, compression pedal. It's you know it's really not that third band of EQ to me isn't a necessity. I, I would save the two hundred dollars and get me a nice compressor compressor compression pedal if needed compressor. So so that's that. Um, Humbucker, the traditional standard iconic humbucker that they've got. The just and this is actually the components are ceramic, so this bad boy is hot. So if you want to back that heat down, because that it almost put a little distortion in it. If you want to back that heat down, there's a way to go in and rewire this um, the schematics from the volume knob to the input knob input, but you know. Simply just back the, you can back the pickup lower, take it away from the string, just like I've talked about in other setting your bass up. You know, if it's too hot for you, back it off of that low, that low E string. That's, that's all you gotta do. That'll take some of that heat off there, but I like, I like it. I like that hot pickup and that's the ceramic components inside of it. And that's a quality thing as well. Like I said, Music Man is not going to jeopardize their name to put out some junk. So don't, don't worry about that at all. Um, it's well worth the, the $300, and you can almost find them used for, I've seen them um, used for cheaper than that, and it's, you know, unless there's some damage on it, which you've got to look it over before you purchase thing, but you can find them used for, for less than that, but this bad boy is, you know, just sweet, and the cool thing that I like about it is they're notched, so you can go halfway, there's my treble, and there's halfway, there's the notch right there, now I can cut the treble off to nothing, or I can boost the treble up to, you know, maximum right there. And the same thing on the bass, on the bass control knob. You got a notch in there, right there. You can cut it off, no bass, and you can bring it all the way up. You can give it 100% right there. So that's a cool thing to keep in mind. When you're playing, when you get yours, just realize there's a notch in there. That notch is for that reason. It's right there, right on the notch. Is dead even. Now you cut it back, or you add boost it. You know, from that notch, if you're breaking even, then you're backing off, or you're adding to it. So just remember that when you get it. And so that's everything. The like I say, the only difference I've seen is that the um, the Sterling, the 34, the higher end, the $500 one has a little stamp here. The bridge might be a little thicker metal this is a little thinner but if you ask me that's a good thing because it's light you know it helps you know it's it makes a little bit of a difference every little bit helps you know these bad boys get heavy on you 
strain your back and everything else. But this is a little lighter, so you know something to think about. So that's another plus for me that you know I don't need to spend the extra two hundred dollars, but just for the stamps, the sterling right here, or the Music Man, it's just the the same idea, but the the bridge is just maybe a little more um durable is all that is but it's adding a little more weight if you ask me so we've got that and like i said it's active so you've still got your got your nine volt battery so remember just you know disconnect it when you're done playing disconnect it because that battery is live active non-stop if you want you make that connection it's live your that battery's just draining 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 so disconnect it when you're done jamming and um and then you won't have to worry about that. But, I mean, your battery's going to die. Just always keep an extra battery with you. And you've got your extra, you know, where my other bases just usually have four bolts. But this has got the standard, um, it's got the sterling stamp on it. And it's got six bolts. So this baby is on there it's for durability, stability. It's all right there. And, like I say, this is a sea foam color. So, um just a beautiful color that's just i like that a lot it really stands out i always like the black but this is nice this is um definitely a great surprise for sure um so that's that you know you string them through to here you know through the back your strings through the back of your bridge some not on the like the jazz bases and p bases they string through the body but um this is, works perfect for me now the fretboard is maple i've always been fond of the rosewood fretboards I've, maple has always been like a uh, i don't like it but this bad boy is, is just quick it's a quick neck and it's a satin they do a satin finish on the bag it's not a glossy polished finish and it is smooth so i mean you're not you're not getting stuck around and you know um just on that gloss sometimes you'll get stuck in that's been a little bit of a concern concern for me but this satin finished neck is is perfect and the maple like i say this is a fast neck the maple does not bother me on this base where i've got you can see back there i've got some older bases that um the maple necks i just haven't been fond of i've always gone towards the rosewood and been pleased with them but this is not the case on this particular base i don't know i guess maybe it's the wood or what but the maple fretboard is perfect and um the satin finish on the back of the neck is ideal for me as well the satin even the frets even have a a satin a brushed nickel look to them they're not just your glossy shiny chrome looking they've got a little you know they've got a little brushed nickel look to them which is which is tasteful too so that's very um that's impressive as well now we've got the 34 inch scale so it's still a 34 inch scale long scale not short scale or anything another thing that helps me out a lot we've got the extra two frets so we've got 21 frets on this which i like that a lot i'm always finding myself the d up here and i'm just reaching for it now i've got the e the d is easy to get to and now i'm just reaching for the e which um you know, it's not that bad at all. The cutaway is good, which is nice. And now when I'm doing the chords. So we can really get up there for playing those chords. something that extra two frets is always nice so i've got a quick neck here it's um got that fat fat bottom i like that fat bottom and it's got it it definitely delivers the fat bottom sound on the the traditional the classic sound of the music man rock rock bass sound that is um still delivers that it's not lacking there at all either um the only thing I've, I find that, you know, I've been playing five string a lot and I really like the five string and that's just, I've gotten used to this, you know, this neck is, is narrow. And I think it's what makes it such a quick neck is that the narrowness of it 
that, um, and it's not as narrow as the, as the P bases. This is a little wider, like an eighth of an inch wider than the P bases, but um, it's just, I like the wide neck. Um, I just gotten used to that wide neck, but this is, not that it makes a difference, but it, it's just me. That's just my um, opinion. And like I said, if you haven't played the five strings, you've been playing a four string, then this neck is gonna be serious. And like I say, it's a fast neck. So that's all, it's a little different. It's a little, um, little narrow here, but not as narrow as the jazz bass or the P bass, but it's, um, it's good. Now I did play the Music Man and initially the width here, the depth of it was, I thought was just unusual. Um, like I say, the, my five string I'm playing now, the neck is thin here, but this one isn't bad. This isn't as bad. And, um, as that one, it almost was, they almost turned me off. I was like, I don't even like that neck at all. I like the thinner necks and I like the thinner necks and this neck isn't that bad at all. The, um, like I say, comparing to the Fender Jazz Bass or the Fender P Bass, the neck's a little rounder on the P Bass as opposed to this. So this is nice. I like this. I like this neck a lot. The only thing, the only downside I have, and it's just a personal preference, is the width of it here. I like my thumb to be a little more on the mid middle of the neck, and sometimes I find my thumb is just it's right up here. So, you know, that's just a personal preference. That is a um, thing I've just been playing that particular bass for a long time with the wide neck. So I like the wide neck, but this is still this is a fast neck. Did I say that? Have I said that yet? This is a fast neck. And I think it's the width of this is that makes that so um, so possible with that and the smoothness of the satin neck. Now we get up here, we've got the typical um, open tuners, you know, you know, open tuners up in the back. So, you know, they're just, the, and one never gets loose. You can actually tighten it up there. That's nice. And the, the three, the clover leaf looking tuners. And the head stock, like I say, if you ever see the Sterling by Music Man, and it's still the sub series, and it's the Stingray. I've got my tuner in the way. It says still the, the Stingray. That is the look. That's the design, the Stingray look. And that is, um, that is it. The Sterling by Stingray, or by Music Man, I'm sorry. And it's made in Indonesia, or you might see one that's made in Korea. Um, this particular one's made in Indonesia. And now if you see the sub, it could be made in Indonesia as well, or it's going to say made in China. So China just produces the sub, big letter sub, but um, but this is the one from Indonesia, which is um, which is everything. So that's everything. The cool thing about it I like also is adjusting your truss rod. You've got a truss rod wheel here. So basically, it's just a wheel. You put your um, Allen wrench in here. And then you just you just turn it. There's no you don't have to stick it inside here and get it to bite in there. That's a wheel. That's I'll try to get a close up of it, but you know that is a wheel there. It's got some depth to it. You see how it's sticking up. You just put it in there, and that's a wheel. That's your truss rod wheel. So that's it. This thing is worth every penny. Like I said, it is because I didn't buy it, but no, but it is. I would definitely buy this base in a heartbeat. Um, definitely as an introduction base, like I say, three, $300 is not bad for a base. And for this quality of a base is not bad at all. And like I said, there's just a few things that I see that are different than the, the high end music man, but nothing to make it, make it detrimental that, you know, I'm not going to get it because of that. I'm going to go spend that, you know, or I'm just going to get a cheaper base, but this base is worth every penny and then some. The quality is there. I mean, we've got the tone. A couple of styles here I'll play for you. Now I'll cut the treble back and I'll boost the bass. the treble and the bass. So, and then I'll, so I'll,
Reduce the treble and cut the bass back. So we still got it. I mean, everything you need right there. So I'll put everything back in the middle, do a little jazz. Treble, cut the bass, turn the volume up a little bit. And we'll boost them both now. Boost the bass and back the treble off. So, so that's just a little bit about the Sterling Bi Music Man bass, and like I said. Worth every penny. Um, a beaut. Nothing but a beaut. neck just really feels good. So if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that bell notification, get in the loop, don't miss a beat, and, and help me help you hit that like button, and I'll catch you all on the flip-flop in the next video. So bye for now. Oh yeah, and don't forget to visit Bassist Gear Corner to get your Music Man Sterling bass today. The link is down below. Check it out. Bye.